A practical process for developing digital literacy programs in eight steps. Step one, think about your users. Users should be at the heart of the program design process. After all, you're creating the program for them. Before you get started designing any program, you should spend time thinking about your customers and their needs. Rather than using a scattergun approach, Think about all the different types of customers you serve. Break them up into user groups. These are groups of people who share common characteristics and very often common needs. It might be useful to draw up a table or make a list of these groups. Instead of going with your instinct, try to use real data to inform your assessment of your users' needs. Sources for this data might include surveys conducted by your library service, circulation data, a strategy that you have for reaching a particular audience, reference inquiries, and program feedback forms. Here's an example scenario. Your circulation data indicates a significant proportion of travel guide loans are made by customers in the age range of 55 to 70. From this, you might infer that this group of customers has an interest in travel. You have also experienced an increase in the frequency of questions about iPad functionality from the same market segment. From this, you might infer that this group of customers is increasingly making use of mobile technology. What needs might this tech-savvy group of travelling customers have, and how could you address these needs through a digital literacy training program? You could combine both of these interests and show your customers how to make the most of their mobile devices while they're on the road. Once you have a clear idea of who you're designing for and what the user need is, you can move on to developing learning objectives for your program. Step two, develop learning objectives. What is it that you want your customers to be able to do by the end of the session? What do you want them to achieve by attending your program? One way of articulating this is through learning objectives. It's really important you start out with a clear idea of what the objectives are. Otherwise you risk cramming too much into a session, creating a disjointed program, and ultimately failing to meet your users' needs. Develop three or four learning objectives for your program. Phrase them as statements of what the participants will have achieved by the end of the session. Here's an example based on the scenario I mentioned earlier. By the end of this session, you will be aware of a range of apps for travel planning and trip management, know how to find the best apps for particular tasks or functions, be armed with essential tips for traveling with mobile devices. The language doesn't have to be formal, just clear and concise. Sometimes a user need might be something as simple and general as learn how to use an iPad. Where this is the case, it's useful to provide context for participants to make the skills and knowledge relevant to them. Contextualize your programs by focusing your generic skills classes on a particular topic, for example, cooking. You can then demonstrate core skills like the different gestures you can use, finding and installing apps, organizing apps and so forth by using cooking examples. This way, your participants leave with the skills and find out about particular apps. And it's more likely the knowledge will stick if contextualised with examples that are relevant to them. Step 3. Brainstorm. Do a fast-paced round of brainstorming to help you plan the content for your session. One way to do this is with pen and paper. Head up a piece of paper with one of your objectives. Then sit down for 10 minutes and capture every piece of information you need to impart to help your participants attain that outcome. Note down functions, tools, techniques, tricks and tips. When you've captured all of the information about that objective, start again with a clean piece of paper and your next learning objective. Step 4. Decide on length. Think about how long you'll need the session to run for in order to allow your participants to meet the learning objectives. As a rule of thumb, three or four objectives works well for an hour long class. It can, however, vary. If your brainstorming yielded heaps of ideas related to a particular learning objective, 
you might need to consider breaking that learning objective down into smaller outcomes or just focusing the whole session on the one outcome. Be open to revising or reducing the number of your learning objectives if your session feels like it's getting too long. Try not to plan sessions that run for more than an hour. It's better to run a multi-session program where participants come back for a second class than to extend the session. Don't overload your participants with too much information in one session. Most importantly, don't forget to factor in plenty of time for participants to work with the technology hands-on, as that's what will solidify the skills and knowledge. It's also what will get the customers excited about their new skills. Step five, think modular. Break a session content up into discrete chunks. Sometimes it's possible to break your content up based on the learning objectives. Other times you'll wanna break it up according to concepts, techniques, or tools. The important thing is that you break the content up logically and that each chunk of content covers a manageable amount of content. Map out your modules using a mind map. What will you cover in each module? And how will you cover it? Remember to cater for different learning styles and preferences within each module. When you're teaching skills as opposed to sharing information, start out with a demonstration, then have your participants try things out for themselves, then finish up with a recap. Step six, create resources. Now it's time to create the resources for your program. But what resources do you need? First of all, you should develop a program outline or running sheet that will act as a reference to you when you deliver the program. This program outline should be detailed and include all the information about the program, as well as step-by-step -step instructions for demonstrations, as well as the activities to be completed by participants. In essence, you should write your program outline so that anyone can pick it up and run it without you having to be there. This will allow you to effectively deliver the session, but it will also mean that your content is reusable by other people later on. You should also prepare handouts that cover the session content in detail to act as a reference for participants after they leave the program. Make your handouts really visual. Use screen captures and icons to act as visual prompts for your participants. Include step-by-step -step instructions for the core functions you cover in the program so your participants can replicate them at home. You should also try to include some suggestions for resources your participants can use to find out more about the topic. Step seven, deliver. This is a fun part. Use your program outline or run sheet as a guide to help you deliver your session. Here's a few tips for running a great program. Get off to a good start. Introduce yourself and tell the participants a little bit about you. Then provide an overview of the session so your participants know where you're going to take them. Adult learners like to know where they're going ahead of time. Use this as an opportunity to also establish your expertise with the subject matter. It's a good idea at the beginning to get participants to introduce themselves to each other too. Remember the best formula for technology training is demonstration followed by a hands-on activity and finished up with a recap. Be responsive to your participants. It's really important that you can read the room. If your participants are staring at you blankly, you probably need to try a different approach. Don't be afraid to divert slightly from your plan if you need to go over something again or to cover a basic skill to help people get up to speed. Rather than asking participants to wait till the end of the session to ask questions, Try to take questions at the end of each module because they tend to mean more when they're asked in context. If you find you're getting derailed by questions that don't relate to what you're talking about, create a parking space, a whiteboard or sheet of butcher's paper on the wall where you can park questions by writing them down. You can then come back to these at the end. Often participants will turn up at a session with their own agenda or specific things that they want to know. You can make the parking space fun and interactive by printing out some outlines of cars and giving five or six of these to each participant. 
ask them to write down any questions they have as they have them, and then give them some blue tack so that they can place their cars in the parking space for you to revisit at the end of the session. Step eight, evaluate. Use a customer feedback form to help you evaluate your program. You should also critically reflect on your experience of delivering the program. What went well? What could be improved for next time? Write a brief reflection just for yourself. You don't have to share it with anyone. Once you've done that, you can pull out any salient points and use these to inform redevelopment of the program.